If we keep ignoring this, something bad is going to happen. It may be somebody I know or myself getting killed. It may be an explosion that just devastates equipment. I don't know which one it's going to be, and I, I hope none, but something will happen. It's only a matter of time. Whatever goes down the toilets or the sinks in our homes and businesses, that all goes through these plants and we expect them to perform miracles. The public should be concerned for a lot of reasons. Number one, their health and safety. It's like a mystery. We, we've given them every dime they ever asked for, they've gotten. Where it went, you know, that that's Swazi administration had to, uh, has to account for that. You're going to ask the administration, the people above me, and you're going to ask, is this devastating to the plant? And could there be an explosion? It can explode. We're not all that stupid. This could be all a disaster area. It's like I, I've said to other people, this could be our Katrina. There are 2.8 million people on Long Island, and for many of them, everything they send down the drain comes here to Nassau County's Cedar Creek Water Pollution Control Plant. After eight years under former County Executive Tom Swasey, the facility is in disrepair. Cedar Creek is a wastewater treatment facility. The sewage that we treat goes through a chain of events that are supposed to happen before it actually gets pumped out and sent out to the ocean. We're, we're at the point of like almost no return. We're that close. We have good workers and we have people who care. If we didn't care, this would have happened even sooner. You know, you would have had something devastating happen. Every stage of this plant, every section, has failures in one stage or another. Preventive maintenance is the most important thing. Simple oil changes or bearing change. You go from having something that, for a minimal amount of money, now you have to change a multi-million dollar piece of equipment. Stuff like that's going on all over the plant. It should have ever got there. It should have never gotten to the point where it is, because you can't afford for the plant to shut down. You can put so many band-aids on a cut, but then if it's a real bad cut, it's gonna bleed right through, and that's what's gonna happen here. There is equipment in every area that is down that needs to be addressed. This is the snowball effect, causing more and more equipment to fail at a faster rate. It all starts here, the first stage of the process where solids, contaminants, and rags are removed so they don't wear down the rest of the system. What this plant typically treats is from Freeport to the Suffolk County line and all the way to the end of the North Shore. We need at any time to have three in service. That means a fourth should be a standby. Well, we don't even have the three to put in service. We have no standby overloading the plant and wearing out equipment faster than it should be. Well, I think one of the most unforgivable aspects or ones that we need to be concerned about is safety, is gas. I don't think that you can put a price on somebody's life that you're not maintaining something. Cedar Creek's vast network of methane gas pipes and valves has been neglected and unserviced for years, increasing the chances of catastrophe for the equipment, the workers, and the surrounding communities. Uh, the cover rotated between 25 and 30 feet. It is not only bent the superstructure, but it also twisted the methane gas arms. But now you've got a pipe that's got eight, eight inches of methane blowing out of it. When it hit the cover, it didn't spark. Fortunately, we didn't get an explosion. Could we be admitting methane gas into the atmosphere, into the surrounding area? Yes, we can. Could there be an explosion? Absolutely. If you do get an explosion like that, and you lose half the plant, what do you do with the sewage that's coming in? You just can't tell people to stop flushing. You're talking about a you know, 100 million gallon flow. Um, it's going to go into people's basements and streets. It can't go anyplace. So if they think it's more necessary for me to work on that pump because the end result is they have to meet their state permit, well, who am I to decide that your life is secondary to their process? I mean, it all goes back to the superintendent of plants. That's what you can talk now. In February 2010, the Nassau County Legislature convened a hearing to question Cedar Creek's management. Among other questions, legislators wanted to know why millions of dollars approved year after year weren't spent. I can't tell you that maintenance is not doing preventive maintenance on these screens or not. <laughs> There's no preventive maintenance done on these machines at, at all. Say in the last five years, and employees have told us that there's not. So, okay, it's true. Okay, uh, what is your emergency action plan? Is there an emergency plan? 
What is my emergency action plan? What is it? Yeah. It should have an emergency. Well, we, don't, we would hope it wouldn't be not a catastrophic failure like that. We were told by the employees that redundancy is the emergency plan. If the stuff breaks down, you're going to say, they didn't maintain it. Well, if they don't have the time to do it, and then you don't give them the ability to do it, you don't give them the manpower to help them do it, and you don't have a safety team there to help them to, to get it done, then you can't blame them. But there's long been speculation as to how he even got in that position. Uh, there are people under him with a license to run a plant, a license that he doesn't even have. So would I like to see him out? Of course I would. It's inexcusable. There just is no answer. My residents want to know what is going on with their tax dollars. Whoever runs a plant should know every aspect of it. Someone has to be held accountable, and all I got was finger pointing and no accountability and no answers. We all very well know that nobody could even make a move or uh, blow their nose without Katugno approving it. So you know, he, he knows everything that goes on, but he knows how to play the game. I saw a supervisor saying there's preventive men maintenance plans. How come they don't give them to us? Have we ever had them? You know what? I, I, for one, am not certain that they even exist. There are a lot of things that were said today that really cannot, cannot be attributed to disgruntled employees. And this is what they were trying to tell us over the years, and that's not the case. These are people that remember a better time when this plant was run much better than it is now, and they want to restore it to that. They're not allowed to. Okay, we have a lot of internal issues inside this plant. On January 1st, 2010, Nassau's new county executive, Ed Mangano, took office and inherited this problem. He's been struggling to wrap his arms around it ever since. Cedar Creek's experienced so many issues over the years that it has reached a breaking point, and that is why we've taken some bold action to address the infrastructure of the aging plant. It is my pleasure to announce that we are launching our first step towards addressing the health and safety issues that have been identified at Cedar Creek. So today, we begin a $10 million renovation at the facility. I do not consider the plant dangerous because um, it's alarming, it's concerning. I wouldn't move it to dangerous because we have some very dedicated employees down there that are really working hard to avoid uh, a catastrophe. This county executive has a plan on reversing that. We thank him for that. But to complete the job, you need to make a change in management there. Bottom line is we need someone to, that, to come in, either promote someone or bring someone in that knows how to run a sewer treatment plant and knows how to deal with employees. We don't have that today. If they don't remove the management, okay, what's at stake is this. It's not going to get fixed to plant. But this is not just about money and mismanagement. Many believe the plant is already an environmental nightmare, a disaster waiting to happen. And the worst may occur if issues within the plant aren't addressed immediately, and if Katugno is allowed to stay. We're not processing sewage. We're not processing. We're pumping it out, which is not something that the plants have ever done in all my years of working for them. Well, what's happening is if it's not processing, it's, it's going through the plant because it has to go through the plant but it's not stopping where it needs to stop. So if there is rags or anything else that's getting through the process, those rags and things could be going out to the ocean, into the ocean outside Jones Beach. I, I, don't, I can't understand why the superintendent of plants has allowed this to go on the way it has. Without a sewage treatment plant fully operating to be efficient and effective, it prevents pollution of the ground, it, pollu it prevents pollution of the waters, of all the things that, especially here on Long Island, are very important to us. One of our biggest uh, you know, mistakes that we could make is thinking that the, uh, the ocean can handle all of our waste. And unfortunately, that's where a lot of these wastewater treatment plants empty into. Uh, sewer plant discharge and contaminants washing on the shores. Um, I think that we are not only at that stage, uh, that we have already had some spills and we've had things wash down storm drains and out into the bay. Who knows what's going to wash up on shore? Could it be needles? Could it be different contaminants that are not healthy for you? Feces? We know that. So is that a health risk? I consider it one. Will they consider it one? I don't know. They're charged with protecting and, and running that plant up to what it's supposed to be. In this case, 
you know, I don't think we can afford to settle for what, you know, for what could happen uh, as, you know, everything is slowly dying right in front of your eyes. And all the things that come out of the pipe that settle into the bottom, is, which is where life in the ocean, a lot of it goes on, you know, it's not good. So we got to stop thinking that the ocean is a giant file cabinet. We can just keep dumping things into it and close the drawer, close our eyes and pretend it goes away because it will come back to, to you know, to harm us. <laughs>